Hi everyone this is Jason here from Nathaniel in this lesson i thought of doing something interesting at least i hope it will be interesting for you it's to take arguably the most boring chord progression human kind has ever used and seen this one you've all heard it 1 5 6 4 so in the key of c c major g major a minor f and you know those four chords as they all call it there are enough and more videos of people performing thousands of songs using them and so on so in this video i'm not going to teach you that of course i'm going to teach you how to make that sound interesting so in other words for this entire lesson we are not going to leave those four chords we are going to keep them we'll deal with them and make them sound you know a million times better i can guarantee you by the end of this lesson you you may even like 1564 i still don't uh, i have my problems with it still but uh, you i'm sure you will like it at least for a short while if you hate it or if you like it already you will love it by the end of this lesson so do make sure to watch the lesson till the very end there are also notes which will help uh, supplement your learning that can be accessed on our patreon page you can head over the link is in the description and uh, let's get cracking so the 1564 1 5 6 just goes on and on and on right so the first way which i found to make the chord progression very interesting is each of the chords could be embellished with their respective plagal cadences so what i mean by that is you do c and you tell yourself what is the 4 from c and the answer is f creates a very gospel sound and it's the plagal cadence it, it is the amen cadence as we call it so da da re di di da re re di you do the same thing with g where do we go there g c major and you pedal the g in the bass that means you don't change the g similarly for c you do c f over c come back to c then for g you do g c over g back to g and then you go to a a d a d minor you need because it's a minor chord and you need to stay within the key of c major which is uh, white note so c f c a g c g a minor d minor a minor f b flat f and back to c so i think this sounds a lot more refreshing we don't hear songs which use this sort of a movement you know with these plagal cadence add-ons uh, but it'll really transform and people may not even know that it's a 1564 running you know but it is so the next strategy to make the rather boring 1564 chord progression a lot more exciting would be to add what i call as passing bass notes or i think they call it line clichés where you kind of connect from chord to chord let's say you do c g now this is your chord sequence so instead of just going c major to g major you can do c and do c g over b you can do you can pretty much kind of play an a minor and then go to g so instead of doing c g you can go okay and then to go to a minor you can go a, you can do like a passing chord there is also called a secondary dominant a uh, 5 of the 6 minor e7th going to uh, uh, a minor 
and then you go F major. So you're trying to go via a chord, via a passing chord. So you do. Uh, A minor and F major. Let's do that again. G major. That's the E seventh going to A minor. Now to go to F, I can go A minor, C over G, F, or I could do A minor. C over E base F. Right. So the third way to make the uh, boring one five six four more interesting would be to add a cadence, which is like a set of chords. And the type of cadence I'm calling it as the epic cadence, which I think works a lot for music. And uh, sometimes I am guilty of overdoing it, but I think it's fine to do it in a case like a one five six four, which is a rather boring chord progression. So if you do C. A minor. Yeah. What did I do there? I didn't play the F at the end, which is the traditional ending. I did C, G, A minor, A flat, which is the six flat major. A flat, B flat, C. Da -de -do -do. Da -da -de. This can influence the melody. Can kind of make a tune on that cadence, so it's not just a random chord replacement. It it can be like a a very inspiring tool for the melody. C G A flat B flat C G F G. You could also do the same cadence going to the A minor chord. So C. I also made the chord progressions a lot wider or longer so that you can hear the cadences and the chord changes better. Let's do it again. C and G F G A. That's that epic cadence. F A flat B flat C. I think that sounds quite interesting or quite refreshing at least with uh, with the 1564. Moving on to the next strategy. So to make the 1564 really radically different or drastically different, I would suggest using secondary dominance. You could kind of go for the overkill and use it before every chord, but you can then start with every chord and then see where you'd actually like to squeeze in the flavor of the secondary dominant. The secondary dominant is nothing but but a five chord before every landing chord or a seventh chord, a dominant seventh chord, which leads to each of the major and the minor chords you want it to go to. So if you take C major, now prior to going to G, you ask yourself, what is the five of G? The answer is D. So you go C, D, seventh, G major. Now you want to go to A minor. What is the 5 of A? Perfect 5 of A is E. So you do E 7th going to A minor. Now I want to go to F. So what's the dominant chord of F? C. So you do C 7th F. Okay, so the secondary dominants kind of make each chord like its own... Uh, each of the chords of the 1564 as their own landings, you know, as opposed to earlier when you didn't have them, you didn't really care about the chords in general. So it makes the landing chords a lot more defined and definitely give them a lot more character, right? So let's do that. One, five. Now, before the five, I want to do the dominance. So you can see the chart where we've written the dominance there. So you go one. Secondary dominant going to G major. So you 
we've kind of hidden away that 1564 nature. Let's do it a bit quicker. in between chords you don't have to use it all the time maybe just there before the A minor You could do it before that four. So I gave you the overkill approach before, which is a secondary before every chord. But uh, yeah, once you learn them, you can use them depending on your requirement or the flavor you are trying to bring to the song. Right, guys. So with this um, one, five, six, four boring chord progression, what you could do to make it really, really interesting, like all the methods we've done so far, right? Uh, this is yet another one of them. This is what is used by a lot of the jazz musicians and in jazz songs, in the jazz standards, where what happens is you take a chord like C major or a G major or an A minor and an F major and you ask yourself, what will be the five of this chord? Well, that will be more like a secondary dominant, right? Or a primary dominant, which is the 5 going to 1. You can expand it further by then asking what is the 2 of that 5? So what you're doing here is you're 2-ing the 5 and then 5-ing the 1, right? Or preceding the 1 with the 5 and then preceding the 5 with the 2. So in other words, inevitably, every chord will have 2 chords before it. Earlier with dominant resolution or secondary dominance, every chord had one chord before it, which is C, D going to G, E going to A, C seventh going to F. Now what I'm proposing is you do your C and before going to the G, you ask yourself in the key of G major, what is the 2, 5, 1? Okay, of G. The answer would be... A minor, D dominant, G. So that A minor, A, D, G. So what if we squeeze that via the or through the journey of going from C major to G? C, D, D, G. Now you want to do uh, A minor. So you ask yourself what is doing the 5 and then 5-ing the 1. From A minor, what is the 2, 5, 1? In other words, that'll be B minor or B minor 7th, E or E 7th, and then A minor. So I, I would really go with that. Something to go to the A minor would sound quite colorful. So you go C, Now you're going to F. So what did I do for F? I did the 2 of F, G minor 7th. C being the 5 of the F. And then back to the F. So if I put this together, of course, it'll be an overkill initially. But then you decide, I want to do that 2, 5, 1 embellishment just for the third chord or just for the second chord. And you have to take the call. I mean, you are the person who's going to use this, right? So you go C, A minor, D major, G major, D, E major, A minor. So let's see, let's try and add it in a kind of a tentative or a here and there way. So C, da, da, G, A minor. I like it there before the A minor. Let's stretch the chords a bit. C major, ba, 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 C major, G. Going to A minor. So you could make it a bit faster. And you 
can do this with pretty much any song you don't have to just do it with a 1564 you can do it with anything and there's so many arrangements we find of timeless classics like even nursery rhymes or christmas songs which people keep arranging with these sort of uh, technologies so secondary dominance and the next kind of obvious flow was the 251 or twoing the 5 and then fiving the 1 uh, between the chords of course so this whole lesson we've just retained the 1564 right now for a bonus before we conclude i just like to consider the fact or consider a scenario where we are not allowed to add any more chords we are supposed to keep 1564 Uh, earlier we had lot of things we did the plagal thing we did the line cliche the passing bass we did the epic cadence which was clearly epic then the secondary dominance and just now we finished off with the 251 embellishment but what if you couldn't do any of that you couldn't do any chord other than this 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 and this okay so now you have to voice these chords differently What do I mean by that? Instead of playing C major as C E G, to find another way of playing it. So a quick suggestion would be keep the bass notes going C G A F or C G A F. Same one five six four bass. But in the right hand, what you could do is just hold a steady chord. You could hold like a fifth chord C G C or G C G C G. So the chords are voiced very differently. So it creates a very pleasing sound for some reason, right? So voicing with fifths will be very helpful. The other thing is you could do you can take the triad and kind of extend it by adding instead of just doing C E G you could do you can add a C major 7th or and a C major 6th okay and then G 7th A minor 7th A F major 7th so Really nice. Uh, another thing you could do, which I find useful, is instead of playing C major always as a triad like that, with those inversions, you can maybe play them in a spread fashion. Spread meaning you take the E in the middle and move it to the top. So. These are what we call using tens or spread thirds. Right? There we go. That's your spread chords. I keep trying to tell myself don't overplay it. It could be some song and then this video may get taken down by the uh, copyright police. So, uh, yeah, but you get the idea. So, we can use a fifth chord the extensions we can use uh, spread chords and another thing which i do very often is is i love my add chords and my suspended chords so if i take the same old chord progression c g a minor f you can kind of add notes to each chord and the best notes to add are your twos which is d which is a with respect to g you have a minor you add the b F you add the G, so that's all your add twos. Adds that emotion to the chord, so you can do even a four there, suspended. like an a minor with a 2 and a 4 so adding 
So mm-hmm. what have we learned so far? Taking the same chords without adding any more chords to the party. You do with voicing, fifth voicing. Add the upper extensions like the seventh chords, ninth chords. You know, eleventh chords and whatever else to make it more jazzy. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you can do a lot of things to really make. a 1 5 6 4 chord progression actually quite useful if you think about it and not sounding overdone or overused right now i didn't take the 1 5 6 4 to to kind of diss it or make fun of it i myself have used it before but it's just something we hear pretty much all the time in a lot of music so maybe as an upcoming composer you kind of find a need to use it and uh hopefully in this lesson it's giving you some unique ways of bringing it way more into the forefront you know f- for the listener and also make it very unique and more refreshing and fresh for the listener's ear to hear right guys hope you found the lesson useful this is jason here from nathaniel school of music and all our lessons can be found on our youtube channel so we'll be doing quite a few more we we've been doing a lot of videos and we do not want to stop for sure so do consider subscribing to the channel hit the bell give the video a like that really helps the video work well with the youtube algorithm leave us a comment with something you'd like to learn and consider following us on patreon and if you'd like to learn a course or attend any of my workshops the links are in the description cheers see you in the next one